Pharmacist Dave here, Nature versus Big Pharma. We're going to look at three beverages that may reduce the risk of stroke by 20%. Which one's the best? I'm going to show you. Stay tuned. First, we're looking at a study from Japan. This was published 2013, over 82,000 people. 13 years later, they found that those who had one cup of coffee a day had a 20% lower risk of stroke. Oh my goodness, coffee's controversial, isn't it? You look at the news one day, you see a headline, coffee good, next day, coffee bad. Which is it? Meta-analysis, 2021, may answer that question. They looked at 21 studies. Over 2.4 million people involved, those who had three to four cups of coffee a day had a 21% lower risk of stroke. But the authors go on to say that we need studies with excellent design to confirm our findings and provide a more definitive conclusion. What does that mean? Coffee is still controversial. We don't have good quality studies. We can't make any good conclusions. Okay, coffee not so good, maybe good, who knows, whatever. What about green tea? Let's look at that. Those who had four cups of green tea a day or more enjoyed a 20% lower risk of stroke. Great! But... Did green tea reduce risk of death? Well, that's kind of a, a lofty aspiration, but guess what? Five cups or more of green tea a day, 15% lower risk of all-cause death compared to those who had less than one cup a day. Whoa, this is just one study though. If we look at other studies, are we gonna find that green tea is controversial like coffee? Uh, no, meta-analysis, nine studies, 194,000 participants. Those who had three cups or more of green or black tea each day enjoyed a 21% lower risk of stroke. Here's another meta-analysis from 2020. They found that for each daily cup of green tea or black tea consumed, there were all these wonderful benefits. Where do these benefits come from? Most likely flavonoids. What do you get from flavonoids? Anti-cancer, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antiviral properties, also neuroprotective and cardioprotective effects. Wonderful. What are flavonoids? They're polyphenols. They're the primary polyphenols that are found in green and black tea. All right, which one has more flavonoids, black tea or green tea? Green tea is the winner. Uh, I also like green tea because it has more epigallocatechin 3 ogallate, which is EGCG. Why does EGCG matter? Here's why it matters. Better. Go with green tea. All right, let's compare it to Big Pharma. Big Pharma has Agronox. This lowers the risk of a second stroke after the first stroke. How effective is it? 37% decrease in the risk of a second stroke. Pretty good. What about all-cause mortality? 1% lower. Hmm, not so good. Not even statistically significant, as a matter of fact. What about statin drugs? They reduce the risk of an ischemic stroke by 30%. What's ischemic? That's where you get the blood clot in the brain, as opposed to hemorrhagic, where you're bleeding in the brain. So that's pretty good. 30%. All-cause mortality reduced by 28%. Also very good. Let's compare them all right beside each other. We have Agronox, statins, green tea. You can see green tea hangs, man. It does pretty good. It's, it's, if it was a drug, it would be prescribed to everybody, but it's not a drug and it's not prescribed to everybody. I think that's a problem. I think most people should be consuming green tea and this is why. Now, if you've had an ablation for atrial fibrillation, a flutter, SVT, you're going to be interested in a book that I have coming out pretty soon. This is geared toward people who have had an ablation and are looking to do everything they can to minimize the risk of having another arrhythmia going forward. And when the book is released, I'll make an announcement on the channel. So please subscribe and stay in the loop. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.